Good afternoon and welcome to the information session on the Brain Injury Fundamentals Certificate Program presented by the Brain Injury Association of America. My name is Peggy Shaskin, BIA Training Manager, and I will be your facilitator for today's webinar. Next slide, please. Thank you. Our mission as the voice of brain injury, we improve the quality of life of people affected by brain injury across their lifespan through advancing prevention, awareness, research, treatment, education, and advocacy. The Academy of Certified Brain Injury Specialists, ACBIS, a program of the Brain Injury Association of America, is excited to offer a new format for delivery of the Brain Injury Fundamentals Program. Next, please. The agenda above outlines the components that will be discussed today as part of our webinar. As an audience participant, you are welcome to post questions during the presentation, and these will be presented, excuse me, will be answered at the end of the presentation. I am pleased to introduce our speakers today, Zenobia Mehta and Peter Wright. Zenobia Mehta holds a master's degree in speech pathology from the University of Texas, Austin, is a certified case manager and certified brain injury specialist trainer, and serves as a board mem member of ACBIS. With 25 years of experience in brain injury, she is currently the director of learning and development at Center for Neuro Skills. Peter Wright holds a master's in business administration from Penn State. He is a certified brain injury specialist trainer and is the director of learning and development for Collage Rehabilitation Partners. He has 30 years experience in the field of brain injury rehabilitation and currently oversees training and development for more than 1,000 direct care management and therapy staff. He has taught ACBIS since 2008. Both Peter and Zenobia both serve on the ACBIS committee that established and continues to develop the brain injury fundamentals curriculum. Thanks, Peggy, for that introduction, um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today for this discussion. I'm Peter Wright, and it's really my pleasure and my privilege to be with you to uh, present some information with you uh, uh, to you about these courses and some of the exciting things that are going on in brain injury education um, through the Brain Injury Association. So we're going to start with a little bit of a history lesson, um, some background and context on the program offerings through ACBIS, the Academy for the Certification of Brain Injury Specialists. And to start that history, we're going to go all the way back to the early 90s. And at that time, the Brain Injury Association, in an attempt to gather information from relevant providers around education needs, uh, surveyed 565 acute, subacute, and post-acute programs. And they were really interested in exploring what are the training needs in the areas of brain injury. Uh, at the time, the results for those surveys showed that 75% of respondents indicated that specialized training was needed for, for their licensed staff. And a full 85% of respondents indicated that training was needed for non-licensed employees. The majority of those survey respondents indicated that they would be willing to give preferential hiring and even higher pay to individuals with that specific brain injury training. So with the results of that survey in mind, the Brain Injury Association took some time and developed this program. It's the Academy of Certified Brain Injury Specialists, and it was developed to address those training needs. It was originally called the American Academy for the Certification of Brain Injury Specialists, but in the, in the few years after, uh, they decided that that was a little too limiting, and to this day, it's just the Academy of Certified Brain Injury Specialists. I will admit it took a few of us who've been around a while to drop that second A and get used to it, but the reality is this course is being taught around the world, in Europe, in the Middle East, among other places. So it's, it's really uh, grown in terms of that scope. Since then, the ACBIS Board of Governors has been populated 
by many experienced professionals in the field of brain injury rehab. And they volunteer their time and their expertise to continue to develop training and certification programs to meet the needs of the brain injury community. So the first version of the CBIS program, the, the Certified Brain Injury Specialist Training, that was launched in the mid 90s and an initial group of participants was credentialed with their CBIS. Since that time, the program has gone through several upgrades. It's evolved from seven chapters of core brain injury topics to more than 20 chapters of in-depth, evidence-based knowledge and best practices. And as a matter of fact, the latest edition of the Essential Brain Injury Guide is currently in development as we speak. So hot off the press, a new brain injury guide and ACBIS curriculum is on its way to you soon. To date, tens of thousands of people have been certified as brain injury specialists through this program. And over those years, while the CBIS certification program gained recognition in clinical circles as the go-to training in this area, at the same time, the needs of providers and the employment landscape shifted. So leaders in the field identified the need for a training program that specifically targeted non-licensed direct care folks. And that could also include facility employees, uh, people not directly working with individuals, but who would encounter them and would benefit from this type of training, whether they're facility, food service, facility maintenance employees, uh, even groups like first responders and others in the community. The training was really targeting addressing the unique needs and challenges of those who care for or encounter individuals with a brain injury. Once again, we used the power of a survey to gather information and training areas were identified and a curriculum was developed that utilized adult learning principles encourages high levels of participant engagement, and focuses on application of knowledge and skills. Thus, the Brain Injury Fundamentals Program was born in 2018, and to date, over well over a thousand individuals have completed the course and received their Brain Injury Fundamentals Certificate. Traditionally, the Brain Injury Fundamentals course has been offered as an in-person training. That could be in person in a classroom setting, or it could be in person virtually in a, in a format like this one. And while that traditional model is still offered, with the power of technology, we'll be sharing with you today some exciting news about a self-paced course uh, that will be available online. That's gonna come in the second half of our talk today. Uh, now that you have some background on ACBIS and ACBIS programs and the fundamentals, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to further contrast the two distinct training options available. So as we look at these two programs side by side, you can easily, so you can easily distinguish them and you can think about who each program might be appropriate for um, in the worlds you move in. If you'll allow me, I'd like to start at the end here with the last bullet because there is a primary difference between these two educational programs that I think informs all of the other details you see here. And that difference is that, that CBIS, Certified Brain Injury Specialist, is a certification. And people will earn a credential after passing an exam, and that credential is CBIS. It's a credential that follows them wherever they work, and it's a nationally recognized credential demonstrating an expertise in brain injury. It's also a credential that a person must maintain annually with continuing edu education. On the other hand, the Brain Injury Fundamentals Certificate program earns individuals a certificate that demonstrates completion of a training course. And the certificate can be renewed through a review course when it expires after three years. In this way, you could think of it as similar to a uh, CPR training, perhaps, or crisis prevention that some of you may be familiar with. 
you complete a training and then you can refresh periodically to maintain a certain level of knowledge and skill in a specific area. So with that difference in mind, you can see here on the slide some of the other differences and the different potential audiences for these programs. You can also see different requirements for work experience between the two programs, uh, different expectation for education level. I should note here that while the CBIS minimum requirement is a high school diploma, it is a training course that people with bachelor's and even advanced degrees have certainly found enriching and challenging. You can see the competency requirements are also quite different. The CBIS certification does require people to pass a proctored online exam with no notes or support materials, and they get two opportunities to test within a year of applying. By contrast, brain injury fundamentals, the certificate is earned by taking an online quiz that is not proctored, it is open book, and it allows for repeat attempts to take the exam to achieve a passing score. In this way, the quiz is intended more as a review of key concepts and as a knowledge check to demonstrate comprehension of the material. So you can see some clear differences between these two educational tracks, but I would like to point out that while they can be used individually uh, to target specific people or groups, together, these programs can actually serve as a very effective professional development pathway. So you could see, for example, how someone might begin their work in the field um, and start with the brain injury fundamentals course, maybe in their first year of employment or even as used as onboarding training, which I know that it's used in some organizations in that way. And if a person chooses to stay in the field or they're simply interested in further expanding their skills and their knowledge, they could move on to taking the CBIS course. And I, I know well organizations, including my own, uh, that are out there using the courses in just this way. So now that you have a little more background on the fundamentals course, and how it's structured and where it fits into the context of the ACPIS offerings, let me share just a few features of the course itself. The course covers areas including brain function, cognition, interaction and rapport building, understanding and working with challenging behaviors, medical complications, medication management, and supporting families. As we mentioned previously, one of the main goals of the course is participant engagement and interactivity. So to that end, the course materials include an interactive workbook. The participant can fill in that workbook while they're taking the course. They can answer discussion questions based on the material. There's also a variety of multimedia resources in the course, including video scenarios to demonstrate concepts. For example, you, you see a few stills here on the slide from a scenario where participants get to view a staff member interacting with a brain injured individual, and it's a, a point of view kind of approach in the video. And first, the participants would observe someone who's displaying, to be fair, we'll say, to be kind, we'll say they're displaying not very effective uh, communication and interaction skills. Uh, yelling, criticizing, kind of rude to the individual, making demands. And participants have an opportunity to critique the interaction after they've watched it. And then they get to observe someone using really excellent rapport building and supportive interaction skills. Someone who's making great eye contact, demonstrating therapeutic support and great listening skills. In the course, there's also a, a through line that hits on two case studies. You see one of them shown here on the slide for an individual named Carl, and there's another one named Stephanie. And participants are offered their, their individual clinical profiles with sort of an overview of their case and the areas of function in which uh, they have challenges as a result of their brain injury. And then throughout the course, uh, we continually make reference to these case studies for those individuals. 
and course materials are continually referring back to these individuals um, and participants answer questions that encourage critical thinking, problem solving, and application of the concepts in the chapters. So prior to now, this course offering was available, as I said, in traditional in-person programs, whether it was a live classroom or a virtual real-time classroom. And in that context, participants would first register for the course, then they would need to arrange an in-person instructor training, and the rates for, for a, a paid trainer for that might vary by instructor. Sometimes a, a provider might be hosting a class and have instructors uh, available in-house. Uh, and other times folks might have to seek out those opportunities and, and they might be occurring at, you know, uh, at the state level, perhaps at a, at a conference, uh, or they might, someone who's interested in pursuing might need to reach out and, and locate uh, an opportunity for taking the training. Participants, once engaged, would complete an online, uh, once, they, once they are engaged and applied, they would complete the training which could run anywhere between seven and 12 hours, depending on the style of the instructor, the size of the group, the format of the course. Uh, it could be one or two back-to-back -back days, or it could be done perhaps uh, in smaller segments over the course of several weeks. Once participants have completed the training part, they would then complete their online open book quiz that we mentioned. Then after that, they would complete a form, and then they would receive their Brain Injury Fundamentals Certificate. They would be getting communication from the Brain Injury Association all along the way, and that certificate that they receive is valid for three years, and then they have the opportunity to renew it uh, by completing a 60-minute online review course, and then again can, can maintain that certificate. So if you're a participant or a potential participant, you could be offered this opportunity within an organization, or you might seek those options out via contact with BIA, as I mentioned. If you're an instructor or an admin at your organization, you might be supporting these steps all along the way. So that brings us up to the moment where we'll transition to telling you a little bit more about the self-paced course. So to do that, I'm going to hand off to Zenobia, who's going to take it from the instructor-led course that we discussed and the refresher that we just mentioned into uh, the future, if you will, uh, and the offering of the new self-paced course. Zenobia? Thanks, Peter. Thank you for providing that history of ACVIS and information on CVIS and the Brain Injury Fundamentals instructor-led course. What, as Peter mentioned, what we're really excited to share with you all is our new self-paced course. As Wendy Waldman, who is the chair of the board of directors of the BIA of Indiana stated, the self-paced course is an alternative way to complete the course. It allows for flexibility, it alleviates time constraints, there is no travel involved, and it really allows for access, especially in those regions where limited brain injury fundamentals infrastructure exists. To be clear, while the content of the course remains the same as the traditional in-person instructor-led course, and the workbook is the same, there are a few differences that we wanted to highlight. First, the video modules are all online and available anytime 24-7 for you to review. Um, this is the same course content utilized in the traditional classroom program. Uh, second, participants are not required to coordinate a class with an affiliated BIAA instructor for training. And lastly, there is a mandatory live two-hour interactive instructor-led webinar that must be completed before completing the online quiz and application process to receive the certificate. 
And of course, if you ever have any questions or issues, you can always contact the BIAA customer service support. Next slide. <clears throat> As we previously highlighted, completing the self-paced course allows for self-paced learning, enabling you to complete the program requirements up to one year from the date of registration. Additionally, the lectures and class sections, excuse me, sessions are recorded, and you're able to revisit the material as needed to reinforce learning and understanding. Participants register for the course and select a webinar date and time in the BIAA marketplace. Materials include the online video modules and the training workbook. After this webinar, you will actually receive an email with the information needed to pre-register for the self-paced course. So you all will actually have first dibs on registering for this course. Then beginning on April 1st, the course will be open for registration to everyone on the BIAA website. After reviewing the seven video modules, which take approximately seven hours to complete, participants then attend the live two-hour instructor-led webinar. And after the webinar, you will receive a link to take the short open book quiz consisting of 34 multiple choice questions and two short answer questions. To receive a certificate, you must pass the quiz with a score of 80%. And the quiz can be taken as many times as needed. You must also submit the brain injury fundamentals form in the ACTIS portal to receive the certificate, which is valid for three years. And as Peter mentioned earlier, once the three years are coming to an end, you're encouraged to renew your BIF certificate by registering for the 60-minute online video um, refresher course, um, which also you will take the open book quiz with 80% accuracy, and then um, the certificate will be valid for another three years. Next slide. <clears throat> Peter, I think we're on the um, dates, oh, the self-paced course dates. Sorry about that. I think it maybe took two clicks. A second, I'll get back there. There you go. Thank you. Sure. So this slide shows the dates and times of the live instructor-led webinars for the next six months. Participants are encouraged to register at least three to four weeks in advance of the webinar date to allow time for application processing, for the workbooks to be mailed, and to complete the online video modules. As you can see, there are a variety of days and times to allow for different time zones and flexibility. And as we get closer to September, more dates and times will open up. During the webinar, attendees can anticipate the guidance of one to two seasoned instructors who will skillfully navigate the session. The instructors bring a wealth of expertise and experience to the table, ensuring that participants receive comprehensive insights and understanding of the reviewed materials. The webinar is designed to foster active participation and engagement rather than just a passive listening experience. So you are strongly encouraged to immerse yourself in the discussions surrounding the materials. And this interactive approach not only enhances comprehension, but also facilitates a deeper exploration of the subject matter. You can also clarify any uncertainties you might have had watching the videos and gain practical insights that you can apply in your respective fields. Ultimately, the webinar serves as a platform for collaborative learning and professional development, empowering you to expand your knowledge and skills within the subject area. Next slide. 
<clears throat> these are the benefits of the course to survivors, participants, and organizations. For the brain injury survivor, specialized care provided through this course ensures that survivors receive the attention and support that they need, fostering an environment of understanding and empathy. Early interventions can significantly enhance the rehab and recovery process. So this course facilitates enhanced communication and education for survivors. For you, as the Brain Injury Fundamentals participant, there are so many advantages to taking this course. By acquiring essential skills and knowledge, you will enhance your professional capabilities. The course really serves as a catalyst for personal and professional growth, empowering you to contribute meaningfully to the field. Another feature of this course is its role in building a network within the brain injury community. You gain valuable connections and access to a supportive community that shares insights, experiences, and resources. Additionally, you'll be able to equip survivors with vital knowledge and skills to better understand their condition, communicate their needs, and actively participate in their rehab process. For professional organizations, this course becomes a cornerstone for workforce development. Certificates of the program are equipped with the expertise needed to contribute effectively to the organizations, really fostering growth and innovation in the field. Moreover, this course creates retention opportunities within organizations. The consistent work process opportunities it provides ensures that professionals can apply their knowledge in a structured manner, contributing to the overall efficiency of brain injury related initiatives. Essentially, taking the brain injury fundamentals course not only benefits survivors by providing specialized care and early interventions, but also will empower you with valuable skills and knowledge. This course is not just an educational endeavor, it's really a catalyst for positive change in the lives of brain injury survivors and organizations dedicated to supporting them. Next slide. <clears throat> One of our most recent fundamental self-paced beta testers, Trevor Hartman, who is a lead life skills trainer with ReMed, shared insights gained from his approximately six months of healthcare experience. And when he was asked about his experience with the self-paced program, he expressed, all I wanted to do was grasp a better understanding of my client's day-to-day -day life and this course really opened up my knowledge as to what they were going through and why. So you can see it's evident that the fundamental self-paced program offers invaluable insights for professionals like him working in healthcare. This testimonial underscores the significance of continuous learning and professional development in enhancing the quality of service delivery and ultimately improving outcomes for survivors. This program stands as a valuable resource for healthcare professionals seeking to expand their knowledge and skills in supporting individuals with brain injury. Great, right. thank you so much, Peter and Zenobia. I do have a couple of questions that have came through in the chat, if you guys would not mind answering them for the good of the group. Um, the first question is, can health providers practicing outside of the United, outside of the United States apply for this course? Yes. Uh, we, as Peter mentioned earlier, we do have um, providers outside of the United States um, taking these courses, both CVIS and Brain Injury Fundamentals. And you would apply the same way going on to the website and registering for the course. Great, thank you, Zenobia. I just had another one come in that says, is it ever appropriate to have a high functioning TBI survivor to take this course to help others? 
to help to help others. Maybe in a support group. Sorry, Peggy, I interrupted you. That's okay. It says, is it appropriate to have a high functioning TBI survivor? So I'm reading this as the person that's asking the question is a is a traumatic brain injury survivor themselves. Would it be appropriate for he or she to take the course if they could then in turn help other people? We've always felt, I, I won't speak for Zenobia, but we've always felt that, that education for individuals with brain injury is a key element and driver of successful rehab. So um, it's never, never wrong for anyone to engage in brain injury education. Uh, that said, the, the course does is somewhat angled towards those providing care as professionals. Uh, it doesn't mean that individuals with brain injury or family members wouldn't benefit from it. And really, I think it's probably a case by case uh, basis as to whether somebody feels like the course is right for them. And, and in, in our of, uh, yeah, go ahead. And in our organization, um, like you mentioned, Peter, we also offer it to family members. I think it's a great way to provide education um, to them as well. Here's another question. Is there a difference in cost between the two certificate programs? Between the virtual and the in-person? No. Brain Injury Fundamentals, I believe, has a, and, and I'll, I'll look to, to our BIA folks on the call to, to clarify for us further, but uh, as far as I know, the cost of, of each program is, is the same, um, with the exception of any additional costs somebody might have to cover if they're taking a live, a live instructor-led training and are paying some sort of additional uh, payment to the instructor. Otherwise, the cost for application and the workbook are the same, I believe. And again, the course materials are exactly the same. You get the workbook, um, the self-paced course has the video modules, whereas the instructor-led course, you're um, reviewing the same course content on slides. Um, I don't have any other questions for the good of the group. I have a few that I'm responding to um, for particular things. So I wanted to say thank you very much, um, Zenobia and Peter, for your presentation today. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.